the new planner access by Microsoft Teams brings together all of your tasks from planner, project, Microsoft Loop, Outlook, and even to do, which is great because it brings all of your tasks under one umbrella, but it can also lead to overwhelm because you have so many tasks and you aren't exactly sure what to do with them. So in this video, we are going to break down each of these components and I'm going to share with you my top tips and tricks so that you can learn how to manage your tasks effectively. Let's first start off with managing our planner plans. If we go new plan, then we will have some quick options here, but I like to go see all templates. And then here we can go through the different templates that we have available for us. And if your organization uses planner premium, formerly Microsoft project, then you'll also have this premium option here, giving you some additional capabilities. But let's go with this basic plan here and select use template. We will give our project a name and then also assign it to a Microsoft group. So here we have our plan and we can see how those templates create a really nice foundation for managing your project. And it's even broken down into these different buckets for initiating, planning or executing. So buckets are a great way to create phases for your project. Now, when we click on these task cards, we have some additional options here. So we can assign a team member to this task so that they'll be notified. And we'll see that in just a moment. We can also add a tag, which is a great way to visualize your project with colors. And then here are those buckets. So we can move this task to the planning phase if we wished, as well as update priority. So this one was by default high, but I'm going to move it to a medium priority. And then we'll also assign a start date as well as a completion date. We also have the ability to add additional notes and even checklist items. So I think that these are a great way to pinpoint the specific criteria for each of these tasks and then as the assigned team member works through the task, they can work through those checklist items and track their progress. If you have any attachments, then you can add them here. And as your team works through these projects and tasks, then you can comment on these specific task items at the bottom. So here we are within Mike's Microsoft Teams and he's been notified of that task. We click on that, it will bring him to the task card that we just created. So here he can update any of the items on this task card, but some common ones would be to update the progress, to let the team know that he has started it, work through those checklist items and even add comments. Another great new feature within the new planner is the ability to select the plan name from this task card and it will bring you directly to that plan. In addition to the activity feed, Mike can also access all of those tasks from the new planner under my tasks and then the assigned to me area. And here he can see that plan, Amy's animal shop project. And then here he can open up that task card and mark his task as complete. Moving on from managing these individual tasks, all plan members can access the plan under my plans. And you might find it under recents, but you'll find those shared plans in shared as well as within my teams. But instead of the filters, I just like to use the search bar and you can start to search the plan name and then locate it that way. And if you are going to be using a plan actively, then you can even just pin it to your navigation menu so that you can access it from the left hand side. And when we want to share these plans, a new feature is an improvement to the sharing link. So if we go up to this little drop down carrot then we can say copy link to plan. And then here, let's say that we want to share this into an email Then we can simply control V to paste that link and you'll see that it has gone planner and then the name of the plan, just making it easier to share. And if your organization is using planner premium, then these plans can also be accessed within planner and all of the features that we just discussed are also available with the additional functionality that comes with planner premium, such as timeline view. Now that we've taken a look at how we can manage tasks within planner plans or planner premium, let's dive into Microsoft loop and how we can manage tasks specifically from collaborative meeting notes. Let's go ahead and create a meeting. We will give it a name. We can add some team members. So I'll add Mike to this meeting. 
And then at the bottom here, we have add an agenda, which are collaborative meeting notes within Microsoft Loop. And at the bottom here, we have these follow-up tasks, which are a task list, and they sync with planner and to-do. So let's go and add a task. We will call this a new task. We'll assign it to Mike and give it a due date. Now, when you assign a team member to these task lists, you just need to click on their name to grant them permissions to that loop page. And here we are within Mike's planner in Microsoft Teams. And once again, he has been notified of that task. So if we click on it, then it will bring him directly to that task card that we just created. And similar to planner plans, these can also be found under my tasks and in the assigned to me area. I just wanted to note that at the time of recording this video, we are not able to select the name of the task list at the top of this task card to redirect you to that loop area. So as a workaround, now anybody within that meeting is able to access those meeting notes from within Microsoft Loop. There is a new section called meeting notes. So if you go there, then you can filter through the dates at the top here. Since this one is today, we can see that that meeting is right there. And at the bottom, we have that task list with all of the assigned tasks from that meeting. Now, in addition to accessing these from the meeting notes area, you can even assign these meeting notes to another location. So if we go up to shared locations at the top, then you can add a copy of this page to another workspace for you to easily access at a later date. Now that we have learned how we can manage tasks within Loop and collaborative meeting notes, let's move on to Outlook. And I look at Outlook tasks from two perspectives. One being emails that I forward to a team member and I delegate a task. And two, an email that I receive and I create a task for myself to complete. Let's first take a look at emails where we delegate a task. I have a little process for this. That's a nice trick. I'm going to share it with you. If we go forward, just expand this. I will forward it to the person that I want to assign the task to. And I BCC myself. And then I just ask them if they can please take care of it. Once you send that email, then you are going to receive that email in your inbox. And I like to flag it for follow up. Then back in my planner, I can access these flagged emails under my tasks. You'll see it under all. And one thing that I really like here is that under plan, it shows flagged emails with the Outlook logo. So you can easily visualize where that task is associated. But another great feature is this flagged emails filter at the top, which will then filter out all of the emails that you have flagged so that you can quickly follow up with them as you see fit. Then when we expand these task cards, you'll see that email attached to the bottom and you can just open it up and you'll be redirected to that email that you forwarded and copied yourself on. The second perspective is when I create a task for myself. So here we have an email and this is an action item that I'm going to create a task for. So I like to expand this my day drop down at the top. Just make sure that you're on to do and then we can just drag and drop this email to add as a task. As an alternative, you can highlight text within an email and then you'll see this little quick menu appear and you can go create task. And the same thing will happen, but the only difference is that the task name will be the text that you highlighted as opposed to the subject. Within my planner, these task emails are going to be found under my tasks under all. Now, I just wanted to highlight that this one shows up as a private task. It does not have that flagged emails with the Outlook logo. So they are different. And then these tasks that we just created can be accessed under private tasks. And you'll see it there. Similarly, when we expand that task card, you'll see that email as an attachment. Now that we have learned how we can create tasks within Outlook from two different perspectives, let's take a quick glance at Microsoft To Do. Microsoft To Do can easily be accessed from the left navigation menu within Outlook, making it very easy to quickly access while you're working on your emails. In addition to that, 
to do and planner have a lot of similarities so we have that my day feature and then under my tasks you have that assigned to me as well as flagged emails and then this tasks is your all tasks so they do speak with each other and then any tasks that you create in one will also be visible in the other now that we have taken a look at task creation throughout all of these different areas and how they all come together under one umbrella i wanted to share with you some of my top favorite tips and tricks that I use every single day for managing my tasks. At the start of every day, I go to my day and then my day will show you all of your tasks that you have that are due that day. And as a little tip here, you can expand these columns so that you can see all of the tasks a little bit better. Now, when I get into the office every morning, I usually have a bunch of to-do items in my head. So I will quickly jot down any new tasks into the my day area. And hey, if you are enjoying this video and you've made it this far, then please give it a thumbs up to let me know that you liked it. And why not hit that subscribe button so that you can be notified on all of my recent uploads. Once you have all of your tasks in there for the day, then you can easily update your priority items. So I like to do this so that I can prioritize what is going to be an important item versus a lower priority. And you can even use these filters at the top Another great thing that I like about the My Day is this little quick look area. So here we can see that this task has a note with it as well as a checklist item. And here I have zero of two tasks completed on that checklist. So once we work through that, then we can start to say, hey, I'm in progress, and then everything will update accordingly. Once I've taken a look at my day, then I navigate over to my task to see what else I should start working on. So we can see that this is a little bit overwhelming, but there are some filters on the top right here, and I like to filter for progress. So right now I wanna see my outstanding tasks. So those are going to be not started and in progress, but if you wanted to search for just completed, then you could select that and adjust your filters accordingly. And a new feature within Planner is that these filters are persistent. So whatever you filter for will be apparent the next time that you open up planner now that i have just my outstanding tasks i like to under the due date sort for ascending and this will allow me to see what tasks are due immediately versus further away so we can see that these two at the top here are red which means that they are late and then these ones are going to be lower priority because they are further away so for these two red ones, I'm going to select the ellipses here and then add them to my day. And then when you go back to my day, you'll see those new tasks appear so that you have them at the top of your mind. In addition to adding tasks to your day, you can also remove tasks from your day. So even though this one was due a couple of days ago, it's really not a priority for me at the moment. So I can just select the ellipses and then remove it from my day. Once you have all of your tasks in the my day area, then I like to plan my day. So here I'm in the Outlook calendar and from this my day dropdown at the top, you can see from the dropdown filter here, my day, and you have all of your tasks. You'll see that I have some of these predefined blocks, which I put in as recurring time blocks so that I know that those are gonna be my times within my day to focus on priority items. And what we can do is just select a task and then drag it into your Outlook calendar. This helps me be accountable and also just sets the intention that I'm going to be completing my task during that time. Once your task is in there, you can easily um, drag these little buttons and then your time slot will update accordingly. For more tips on managing your tasks, either within the new planner, Microsoft To Do, or in Outlook, I've included some recommended videos in the description of this video. Otherwise, YouTube is gonna recommend this video here.